All right, thank you so much, Sadia. And thank you all for being here this evening. Um, happy New Year, happy um, almost end of the week. I hope your New Year's is off to a, a sweet start. Um, I um, really appreciate you all being here. There are many places you could be tonight. So by being here, you're investing in your health. Um, I'd love to hear, I know we're in webinar format, but I'd like, love for this to be as in, you know, interactive as possible and love to hear from you in the chat, uh, what brought you here this evening um, and anything else, anything you're hoping to, to get out of this, uh, this webinar this evening. And I also wanna acknowledge that talking about food and digestion is very personal, right? And can bring up some, some feelings, right? We all have histories around food and, and eating maybe with family or um, things like that nature. So um, feel free to share whatever is comfortable for you. All right, and I wanted to start by talking about why I created this workshop in the first place. Uh, so we all have individual needs, right? Diets, home situations, and different experiences around food and finances. Uh, I'll be offering suggestions. So I ask you to keep an open mind, consider the ones that might work for you. Um, I created this workshop because food is a human right. And I believe every single person deserves access to healthy food. And why? Because healthy food nourishes our bodies, our growing bodies, our aging bodies, our ever-changing bodies. So to prevent serious illness and disease and help us thrive in every aspect of our lives, right? Um, and also because food is nourishment for our physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual health and helps us live longer, healthier lives. And even before the pandemic hit, nearly one in four or 10% of all US households experienced food insecurity, meaning that these house households were either unable to acquire enough food to meet their needs or uncertain of where their next meal might come from. And with the pandemic, it's now up to 23%, maybe even higher now from when this statistic was from, 23% um, of all households food insecure. So, and this only speaks to access to food, right? And not necessarily nourishing food access. Um, and even so many people with access to healthy food still make uh, choices that negatively impact their health. So I wanted to share uh, some different ideas in this workshop for all of you, different ways to share that it is possible to both eat healthy and save money, right? Um, all right, so and thanks for those sharing in the chat. Awesome, looking for shopping tips and budget better this year, wonderful. Um, well, I hope, I hope I can share some suggestions for you all around that. Um, so no matter what your financial situation is, it's always good to save money where we can, right? Uh, we have to eat and food can be expensive, especially even the past few months in this year, it's, food has, costs have skyrocketed, as I'm sure you're well aware. Um, and there are many ways to make buying food, healthy food, more accessible, and the benefits far outweigh the cost. So let's let's dive in here. I'm going to share some tips and tricks for eating healthy foods and not breaking the bank. So you may already know what your biggest food expenses are. As possible, though, you're racking up unnecessary charges out of habit. For example, how much is your daily coffee or tea or prepackaged sandwich or salad costing per week? And I bet the amount might surprise you if that's something you're doing. So one suggestion is to track your food expenses for one week and see where, uh, where your money is going. You're might more likely to see areas where you might be able to scale back or make that food at home if possible. Um, and plus you'll have a handle on your daily meal patterns and be able to incorporate, incorporate changes that work for you and your body's needs. All right, and another suggestion is to make a game plan for shopping. Um, planning ahead is essential to saving money and making wise food choices. Um, making a plan increases the variety in our diets. It decreases food waste when we know what we're buying, how we're gonna cook it and um, yeah, and how much to buy. And we're less likely to make impulse buys and we're more likely to try new foods and make new delicious meals when we have game plan. So one thing you can do is check out what you already have in your covers first before you go shopping. 
Then plan your meals for the week or as many as possible. Some people like to plan every single meal. Some people just dinners, whatever it is. Um, planning some meals for the week. Um, then making a grocery list and trying to stick to it as much as possible. And try as much as possible, right, to only buy what you're sure you'll use. And sometimes this takes a lot of trial and error and it depends uh, a lot of factors, right? Do you live a lot, live on your own? Do you have a whole household of people? How much to buy? You know, it, it might take take a few trap shopping trips to see how much you want to be uh, or how much will work for your um, your needs in your household. All right, and there's lots of hacks I wanted to share with you for when you're at the grocery store. So one of them is buying frozen fruits and vegetables. Um, Frozen fruits and veggies are usually just as nutrient dense and as fresh uh, as uh, fresh, or sorry, as just as fresh as, um, as non-frozen foods. It's often significantly cheaper and you don't have to worry about food spoiling, right? And you can also stock up on um, fresh food when there are sales and freeze that food, whether it's um, fish or vegetables or, uh, or fruits or whatever it is. Um, particularly buying fish, if you are a fish eater, fish household, uh, fresh fish costs 15 to 20 percent more than frozen. And uh, it seems counterintuitive, but frozen fish is actually fresher most of the time than fresh fish that's been sitting out because it's uh, frozen directly from when it's caught. It's on the boat, it's put on ice, it stays frozen, whereas the fresh that you're buying in the deli is has been unfrozen and then refrozen or put put back on ice. Um, and you don't have to worry about it going bad, right? If it's frozen. Um, another thing about fish I like to mention is can buying canned mackerel, sardines, or anchovies. It comes in a little little um, can container, usually with the canned tuna in that aisle. And these fishes are really high in omega-3s, essential for brain and eye health. They're low in mercury and they're always ready to eat. You can eat them right out of the can. You can put them in stir fries um, and they're more sustainable fish and better for the environment than, um, than tuna and salmon. Though salmon is a very healthy fish as long as you're buying it wild. Um, so canned mackerel, sardines and anchovies. I'd start with mackerel if you're a little weary about these types of fish, but mackerel is a pretty light white fish. Um, canned tuna is okay in, in moderation. It is higher in mercury, but a good, um, um, if you're trying to save some money, buying canned tuna. Meat is very expensive in general. So if you're trying to cut back for health reasons or financial or both, you can try replacing meat even two times a week with some, another protein like beans or nuts, eggs, canned fish. Um, all of these are cheaper and very nutritious sources of protein. All right. And again, if you have any questions or anything, feel free to pop them in the chat. I will do my best to answer questions as we go along, but we'll definitely have time at the end too. I forgot to mention that. So, all right. And when you're at the grocery store, one suggestion is to shop the perimeter of the store. And this is where much of the healthier food lives. Has anyone noticed this when you've gone to the store? that the middle of the store tends to contain more of the processed foods. And this is in like a generic supermarket, not necessarily like a specialty store or health food store, but in sort of like the bigger supermarkets, um, the middle has more processed foods. So it's a good place to start to buy your fruits and veggies, your eggs, um, that kind of thing around the perimeter and fill up on that first, because that's what our bodies need. Most of are fruits and vegetables and healthy proteins. Um, and the other thing is avoid shopping while hungry. <laughs> I've definitely done this, maybe you have too. If you go to the grocery store when you are very hungry, you tend to buy a lot more food you don't really, wouldn't necessarily buy, maybe more processed foods and desserts and chips and things because you're hungry and your body's saying, I need fast energy, I need sugar, I need salt. So it's suggestion, have a snack before you go to the store. Um, all right, and I saw a question in the chat about why is farm-raised fish not as healthy as wild? That's a fantastic question. Thank you 
Um, farm raised fish is, tends to be filled with a lot of toxins and chemicals in the water. Um, they're not, um, yeah, wild fish just is a lot, uh, does not have as many pesticides and toxins in general. So if possible, buying wild fish while it is more expensive um, is much, much healthier for our bodies. Um, okay, another suggestion for you all is to buy in bulk and to buy generic brands. Does anybody do this already? You buy any of your food in bulk? I have some, I have some here to show you all. I'm not endorsing any brands here. This is just what I have in my home. Um, this is ground cinnamon. I use a ton of cinnamon in cooking. I put it on everything. So I buy a big jar, or sometimes you can find, like in this photo here on the on the screen, you can find a whole um, you know. A thing where you can scoop out and pour, you can like bring this in and refill it every time some stores have that. If not, buying um, in larger sizes is cheaper and more cost effective. I have some rice here um, that I keep in, uh, um, like in the word, uh, moth proof for sure. Um, containers, I have some, some red lentils. I also have um, oats and walnuts and almonds, all kinds of nuts and seeds and dried fruits. You can buy so many, uh, so many things in bulk. You can also buy granola and trail mix. Um, yeah, spices. Some stores even carry honey, shampoo, things of that nature. Not all stores, but some do. Um, make sure to store in an airtight container so it will last a while and so no moths get in. If you've ever had moths, you know you do not want that. It is not pleasant. So make sure it's an airtight container. It's a little bit of upfront cost to buy some of these, um, these containers. They don't have to be that top of the line, but you just want to make sure like these like air seal ones that, you know, will keep bugs out. A little upfront cost, but you're saving costs down the line because you're buying all this stuff in bulk. Um, so in general, um, in general, generic brands, you'll find the same quality and those are less expensive as well. It doesn't have to be a name brand. In fact, it's, it's often a much better deal to not buy a name brand product. Um, of course, you always want to read the labels. They might be a little different, but in general, and it might even say compared to, um, or this product compared to, and it'll name the, the, the more popular product. So you'll know it's very similar. Um, a one pound bag of say dry pinto beans costs on average $1.79 and makes about 12 um, half cup servings of cooked beans where you could get a 15 ounce can of pinto beans for about $1.69. It's about three servings. So you could buy, um, it's, you know, you're saving a little bit, right? The, the, the more whole food form, the less processed, right? A whole bean versus a can of beans versus a, a ready-made meal, for example. You're saving more the more, um, the less work you have to do, right? So it's sort of a convenience over, um, it's a convenience factor here, convenience versus money. Um, also, if you eat cheese, say a block of, a block of cheese is going to be cheaper than shredded cheese, right? And What's another one I was going to share with you, like um, cut up fruit, right? Often we'll, we'll get that if we're in a hurry or we're going to a big party, you want to just get like a tray of fruit or something and it costs a lot of money, right? And, you know, if you're in a hurry, there's nothing wrong with that, right? You don't have time, you need to, you want to get your fruit. But this is so you have all the knowledge. If you're buying things that are pre-cut, those, those ready-made salads, uh, way more money than buying just a big bulk um like a bin of spinach, you know, or something like that. You're going to be paying more because they're they're making all for you. And then the other one I like to mention is herbs. So anyone here eat a ton of herbs like I do, like parsley, basil, cilantro. I could eat it three times a day if I had endless supply. Um, what I like to do because they come in such large bunches, right? Sometimes I'm like, what do I do with all this? It's going to go bad. Um, I'll use a little right away, and then. Um, rinse off the leaves, you let them dry, and then um, pick them off, put them in a Ziploc bag, and keep them in the freezer. They have a little bit different texture, of course, if they've been frozen, and then you put them in dishes, but then you just have herbs for always when you need them, and you're not wasting them. 
So which stores in your area carry bulk foods? Can you think of some to share, maybe help other folks who aren't sure where to go? I know of a few. I used to live in the Chicago area. I'm now in Cleveland. Um, some of the mainstream stores that are all over the country carry bulk foods. Some are more specialty stores. Any, any in your area? Seeing Costco and Sam's Club. Great, thank you. Yeah, Sam's and Costco. And Jewel has some, okay, great. Great, thank you for sharing. Um, Whole Foods does as well. While Whole Foods is more expensive for some items, it is a good deal for many of the bulk items. So um, that's one. There's also some of your co-op stores have bulk foods as well. Some spices at Caputo's, great. Thank you. Yeah, and there's other, yeah, there's other some specialty spice stores too, um, if you're a big spice fan. All right. So another tip for you all, ways to save money, is buying produce that's in season. Um, local produce that's in season is generally cheaper than out of season options. And it's usually also at its peak in both nutrients and flavor. So it's more bang for your buck. And this is because produce that's not in season has often been transported from far away to get to your store, which is not good for either the environment or your budget. The longer the food has been shipped on a plane, on a truck, you know, across the country, it's losing its nutrients. It doesn't mean there's no nutrients by the time it gets to you, to your store, and to your, your table, but it's less, right, than getting it, say, picked right from your backyard or from the farm um, near you. So if it's, um, if it's produced locally, that means it's easier to get in season and is cheaper. Um, you can buy produce also by the bag, which is cheaper than buying by the piece. So, for example, a bag of clementines or a bag of lemons um, or apples or oranges are going to be cheaper than buying that amount, say, 15 oranges by themselves, right? So buying in bags is going to save you some money. But that's another way of buying in bulk, right? Um, and if you buy more than you need or it's on sale, you can always freeze the rest, right, or incorporate it into next week's meals. And if you use SNAP benefits or EBT, these are accepted at many farmers markets. I know we're not in that season right now, but pretty soon, farmers market, spring season, um, and those offer local and offer often organic produce um, from fruits and veggies to meat, milk, and eggs. Okay. Another way to um, eat healthier on a budget is by buying whole foods and avoiding processed foods. This is not only good for our wallet, but also our bodies, right? Uh, so by skipping the processed foods, which are often really expensive and like the prepackaged meals, the frozen meals, um, they're often expensive, high in sodium and sugar. So many of them have so much sugar and sodium and preservatives um, and have little to no nutritional value. Of course, you can find some prepackaged meals that are fairly healthy and there's nothing wrong with eating them now and again, nothing at all. Um, this is just a, a note that they are very expensive, right? It's convenience over, um, over uh, money, right? So um, if you are though, if you're skipping these processed foods, you can spend more of your budget on a higher quality, nutrient-rich foods, um, the whole foods, by meaning whole, I mean in their whole form, um, like just the beans, just rice, oats, vegetables, you know, and, and adding your own sauces and spices, um, as well as fermented foods, which are essential for our gut health. I'm happy to talk more about this after. It could be its own workshop, but we need uh, fermented foods in our diet every day if possible to have a good diversity of, of gut bacteria for our immune systems and everything else. I, could, I get excited about it. I could talk about it all day. Um, but um, highly processed foods, I'm talking about like soda, crackers, cookies, microwave meals, many breakfast cereals, pastries, and breads that are enriched or fortified. And then also meat products like bacon, sausage, ham, salami. Um, they can all, 
all are can contribute to digestive issues like irritable bowel syndrome and more long-term issues like heart disease and diabetes. So by buying more vegetables and fruits, um, veggies are usually, those are usually cheaper than meat anyway and cheaper than prepackaged foods. So it's not only cheaper, but better for you, right? Some healthy foods that are generally cheaper to buy year round um, are, are broccoli and onions, um, carrots, bananas, oranges. I've seen pineapple, whole pineapples this whole past year at every store I've been to be fairly reasonably, like pretty cheap, like whole pineapple, right? And of course, if you buy chopped up pineapple already made, it's really expensive because they did the work for you. But if you're open, there's just a little work by the whole pineapple, they've been really cheap this year. Also, um, oranges, dried lentils and beans, brown rice, oats, um, frozen veggies, canned fish, as I mentioned. Eggs used to be cheaper. They've definitely skyrocketed this year. Um, canned tomatoes, corn tortillas. So these are all generally uh, cheaper year round types of veggies and a few others. Do check the labels for no added salt, sugars, preservatives. You know, if you can't pronounce it, it's generally not good for our bodies. So, um, all right. Okay. All right, there my slide went on. Okay. Um, all right, another way to save money and care for your body is by skipping juice and soda. It really adds up. Juices and sodas are really expensive and they're full of sugar and additives. Um, even if they're not expensive, they're not really, they're not really nourishing for our bodies. Um, and they can mess with our gut health both the sugar and the preservatives, sometimes the carbonation, especially if you already have some kind of digestive condition or just have a sensitive stomach. Um, and if you can, to opt for water and tea instead, you can flavor your water. If you don't like plain old water, um, you can flavor it with lemon, lime, berries, put basil in it. Um, some people like to put cinnamon or turmeric or other spices, you know, and make, um, make a, your own kind of tea or, or beverage. I like to buy ginger root, looks like this. I buy the whole, the whole root. I buy a lot, like one of these a week. I eat a lot of, we eat a lot of ginger over here. Um, but buying the fresh ginger root is generally not very expensive. Um, I wouldn't worry about it being organic. Some things I make sure to buy organic, which I'll show on the next slide, but this one I, I really don't because you're cutting off the, um, the skin. And if you want to make your own ginger tea, just put in a little, a little piece, maybe like little like this much. I don't know if you can see, just a little bit. Cut off the brown part, chop it up, put it in some boiling water for 15 minutes and strain it. And then you have ginger tea, which is much cheaper than um, buying it out and even cheaper than buying packets of ginger tea. And just for, for uh, um, an example, if you are buying coffee or tea, Every day, let's say it's two dollars, just on average. Uh, say Monday through Friday, you're going to work, you're, you're buying your coffee or your tea. If you make it at home, you've already saved forty bucks a month already just by making it at home. All right. Let me see. There's a question about pure orange juice. Um, you know, it depends. So, orange juice by itself is high in sugar. Um, it's not a processed sugar. I mean, ideally you're not buying orange juice that has like more sugar added, but you still need to be, have it in moderation. And of course, I'm always gonna say it depends because everyone's bodies are different and have different needs. If you're someone who needs to watch your sugar, orange juice is probably not, not the best option because it is so high in sugar. Um, another option might, an alternative could be water and adding fresh squeezed orange juice to the water. So it's not like the concentrated form, if that makes sense. Um, and especially I always like to share, I can't, hard for me not to because I feel strongly, so strongly about the drinking hot water versus cold water. Cold water shocks our bodies and can actually like impair immunity and digestion. And we especially don't need that right now with COVID and everything going on. Um, hot water can improve our digestion, our immunity, help move things along. It's very calming, right? You think about cold water, 
to the body is like a polar bear swim, right? It's like shocking. Hot water is very calming to the nervous system, the digestive system. So um, I'm a big fan of hot water. Okay. Um, and someone asked about pulp in the orange juice. Does it add fiber? Um, it might add a little fiber. Yeah, I don't know if it's a significant, probably not a significant amount. Um, yeah, it's not to say never drink orange juice. It's just sort of depend. I'm just saying depends on your, your individual needs. No, no, do everything in moderation, right? Okay, and I, I alluded to the, the foods to buy organic when possible. I wanted to share this. This is the Environmental Working Group has what they call the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. And these are fruits and vegetables with the most pesticide residues on them. Pesticides are toxins and they're not meant for human consumption. They are put on, sprayed on food to help help grow more food, more, 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 right? And so people make, the companies make more money, but that's at our expense. Um, they can, the toxins can actually destroy our healthy beneficial bacteria and other microorganisms that are in our gut and can cause stomach upset and indigestion and other chronic health issues. This isn't to scare you if you're eating conventional fruit, fruit and vegetables. It's always best to eat fruits and vegetables rather than not, not say, oh my gosh, they're not organic. I won't eat them. No, no, just make sure to wash them and I'll explain in a minute how you can do that. But when possible, these foods here, they may change slightly year to year. This is the current year of what they've determined to be the, the foods with the most pesticides um, that are in the red category here. Foods like strawberries, spinach, um, peaches, grapes, apples, potatoes, tomatoes, peppers, kale, those types of foods generally because they don't have a skin, right? So the pesticide residue is, goes directly onto the food. Whereas the Clean 15, they're saying it's okay to buy conventional, meaning non-organic, non like avocados, pineapples, onions, um, you know, kiwi, eggplant, cantaloupe, um, you know, thing, most of these on here have a skin that sort of protects them. I don't know if it's a hundred percent, but it protects them more. Um, than not. Um, and I wanted to say too, that I understand that this is about saving money and some of the organic produce is more expensive. It often is. And you're, and you're also getting less toxins. If you, for, that doesn't work for you, please buy the, the conventional fruits and vegetables and eat as many fruits and veggies as possible. You can also clean your produce by either buying one of those sprays, like a veggie wash and um, spraying it on there, rubbing it around for a couple minutes, and that gets off a lot of the pesticide residue. You can also clean your produce by soaking it in salt water or baking soda, putting some baking soda in some, some warm water or cool, cool water, right? Um, and that's a really cheaper option even than the veggie spray for getting that off. Um, and I can share this link to later on so you can have access to it. Um, um, let's see, it's a question about, sorry, one sec. Um, blueberries or bananas would fall on the list. Great question. I believe blueberries would probably fall on the dirty dozen, bananas would be on the clean 15, going with the skin, no skin um, rule. And then if the potatoes are washed and peeled, are they okay? I mean, yeah, yeah, they're okay. And this isn't to say like, yeah, like I try and look at food as like healthy, um, healthy versus unhealthy rather than good or bad. And it's not like it's um, awful to eat the dirty, the foods on the dirty dozen list. Um, I think, yeah, washing and peeling potatoes for sure is a, is a really good way to get off um, the toxins. Absolutely. I recommend washing all fruits and vegetables, whether they're organic or not. because. They've been a lot of places, um, generally before they get to. Um, okay. And yeah, question about lettuce. Great question. Um, I think, uh, I'm going to go back. I don't know exactly. There may be more, there may be more information. Um, yeah, I'll share the link for this. And I think they have more veggies than is on here. Um, so yeah, I'll share that. And, yeah, I can always follow up too if, um, if you have other questions that I need to check on. So, all right. 
But thank you for your, these are great questions. Thank you so much. I was grabbing my apron here. All right. One of my favorite ways to save money and eat healthy is to cook at home. My apron, that used to be, these used to be um, hand towels and a friend of mine who's very crafty made it into an apron. The whole thing has little pockets down here. I love it, it's got bicycles on. Anyway, that's an aside. Um, all right, so cooking at home can save a ton of money, right? Generally, you can feed a family of four for the same price as buying food for one or two people at a restaurant. You could save about $1,000 a year on average simply by cooking two or more meals per week at home, right? Which is a lot. Um, the average American household spends about $3,000 a year dining out. Um, not only is it cheaper to cook at home, but it's by and large much healthier, right? There's high amounts of sugar and salt added to nearly every takeout dish and in restaurants. And there's really not a way of knowing how much and what exactly is in your food. If you're sitting down at a restaurant, you can ask lots of questions, of course, and hopefully they tell you what's in the food. Um, but you don't really have a full ingredient list or a nutrition facts label on the food. Um, you, by cooking at home, you know what's in your food, you have a connection with it and where it came from. We do have a relationship with food and with eating, right? It nourishes us, we, we need food and we need to have a, a, like a, a positive relationship with food, right? Some of us don't have that and that's okay. And some of us grew up cooking, maybe our family members cooked and it was a, a joyous time and others, that's not the case. Um, and whatever it was for you, it's, it's possible if this is something that is something you would like to try to cook more, um, it is possible. It is even possible to make it fun, right? Uh, for me, cooking is a creative experience. It is. It can be relaxing. Doing something like chopping, like walking on a treadmill, something that's repetitive has been shown to be, um, to be uh, relaxing. I like to put on some music, right? And I got my cooking playlist and then my sitting down and eating playlist. You could cook for an entire week on the weekends, right? I realize we all have busy lives. Lots of people we're caring for. We have, we have jobs. There's lots going on. Um, if you don't have time to cook every night, understandable, right? You could cook for the entire week on one day, like a Sunday. You can cook a large amount in a slow cooker, a large stir fry pan, and you could have leftovers for the week. You could store them in the freezer. And you could reuse some of that food in stews, stews and stir fries, lunches, and salads, tacos. Um, and it's just a really nice feeling when you're really in a rush one day to come home and open the freezer and go, oh, I have a homemade meal that I made the other day and then just heat it up. Does anybody here like to cook, have a favorite meal that they cook at home? Anybody, any cooks here? Spaghetti, nice. I like a, I like a pasta myself. Anybody else or anyone have an intention of, of cooking more? Oh, cabbage, nice. You cook every day, somebody said, that's fantastic. Tacos, yes, I'm a huge taco fan. Fried with chicken broth, stuffed shells. Ooh, yum. I'm getting hungry over here. Soups, yes. We cook a lot of soups over here too. Soups and stews. And soups and stews, and a lot of these don't, don't necessarily take a long time. I'm happy to share some recipes too about like a sweet potato lentil soup. Really just a, a few ingredients, right? You can make a big pot. It's, it's nourishing. It's got everything you need in there. Warming kind of soup. Um, and instead of these high amounts of salt and sugar, you can flavor your own food with onion, garlic, ginger, salt and pepper, and some spices, right? And you know what's in your food that way. All right, and here's a little bit more about um, the cost savings here of home cooking versus a meal kit versus a restaurant. So the average meal prepared at home costs around $4, $4 for groceries. Um, 
That's a $9 savings per person per meal. To put it another way, a $13 meal, let's say on average a $13 restaurant meal, is 325% more expensive than a $4 meal you prepare yourself. Um, this is an average here. Um, this is an average, I'm gonna say for a dinner, right? Let's just say a dinner is $20 at a restaurant. Seems, seems reasonable. Um, with a meal kit, like a delivery service, some of you may be using that. You're, you're definitely saving money here. It's about $12, 12 dollars 50 and then home cooking, a little more than four dollars, right? You're buying all the, the whole ingredients, and you're having the, enough for, say, the whole week for that versus one meal. So it's just an example here. Um, yeah, and you save even more if you make and use leftovers. All right. Ooh, salmon with veggies. Yes, That's, I'm a big fan of salmon. All right, and then. An extension of, of cooking at home is packing your own lunch and snacks. Definitely a, a good way to, to save money that way. So people who cook at home get more nutrients, right? And eat less fat, sugar, salt than people who eat exclusively at restaurants or um, eat processed frozen meals. Um, yeah, and eating leftovers rather than throwing them out can actually save you about $1,000 per year too. So a lot of times we have intentions of eating the leftovers and then we don't. So if that's happening, maybe do a little little um, examining, maybe why, is it not, was it not good? Um, you forget about it, like what, what happened? Because um, yeah, if, if that's the plan, make a bunch of meals, eat the leftovers, yeah, um, you can save you a lot of money that way. And you can also use these leftovers as lunches. You know, some of us have an idea of what lunch should be, a sandwich in a brown paper bag. Like if that's what you like, that's great. Um, but you can also have a warm nourishing meal as well, especially in the winter to eat sort of warm like soups and um, yeah, warm foods like stir fries. Why not have that for lunch too? So you can have that for dinner, you can have it for lunch, maybe every other day if you're getting sick of it, right? Um, and you can even prep the night before so you're not rushed in the morning if you have to run out the door. Snacks are extremely expensive too in general because of the convenience factor, the grab and go, you know, the granola bar, um, yeah, the energy bars, those types of things. And they're often full of sugar too. And sometimes lots of other colorings and yeah, chemicals and things like that. You can find some that are not and they're still expensive. Um, this is a, an actual picture. Again, I'm not endorsing any brands of foods. This is just a picture. I make these energy bites, these that are on the plate there, and uh, energy bites, protein bites, and they're generally made from dates, and um, you can use oats or just nuts, dates and nuts, and a little, little like some cinnamon, some spices, some like lemon or vanilla extract. You can put coconut flakes in them all kinds of nuts and seeds and you grind them up in a, um, a blender and roll them into little balls and then I keep them in the fridge. And I do that every week and I have snack for the whole week. And I know exactly what's in it and it's way cheaper than buying this kind of thing at the store. And I do have a recipe for that too, I'm happy to share. Okay. And yes, someone said homemade hummus is great. Yes, thank you. Yeah, hummus is a fantastic snack and it adds up if you're buying it every week. And it's really a can of chickpeas. Some people put tahini in it. Beans and tahini don't work for me, so I don't use tahini, but generally it's a can of beans, some tahini, some salt and pepper, a little olive oil, mix it up. That's it. Can of beans is super cheap. So you just need some kind of blender or immersion, immersion blender. Those are cheaper if you don't have any blender. Can make suits, soups and all kinds of things with an immersion blender. All right, and uh, and also just to say, if you're not able to cook all of your meals at home, that's okay. Like life is hectic. We all have a lot of things going on. This is a um, this is educational, right? I'm trying to share some information. I don't want anyone to feel bad if you're not cooking. If you don't have time, it's okay. If you get takeout, if you you know pick up your lunch, that's okay. Um, maybe you can do it a little bit less if you're doing it every day, right? It's like about finding ways that work for you and your, your household. Okay, 
just a um yeah just one last idea for you and then um yeah we'll have some time for questions so all right so one a last idea for saving money and eating healthy is planting a garden and growing your own produce i mean talk about local right this is the real farm to table the freshest most nutrient dense lowest cost produce you can consume coming right from your backyard of course this depends on your space your climate the critters in your neighborhood um, and the energy to start it up, but nothing can replace the magic of growing your own food. And there's a lot of community garden plots. If you don't have a yard or don't want to have a, a garden in your yard, you can share the produce with your neighbors, um, your real community, community neighbor building event too, to, to um, be in a community garden plot. Some of them have long wait lists. I don't know, is anyone part of a community garden? Or does anybody garden at their at their own home? You can also, if you're saying an apartment or a condo, you don't have a lot of space, you could have a little box um, and grow herbs or tomatoes, um, kind of smaller veggies in a maybe a like a plant box. That's the word I'm blanking. A plant box um, or just some pots too. I unfortunately can't do that because I have cats that love to eat them. But if you do not, then that's something to uh, to think about. Oh, cool. A few folks garden here. Awesome. Yeah, and I have not personally had a community garden plot, but I love I have know many people who do and they rave about it. I love it. OK. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. So just kind of recap, you know, shared a lot of information. Um, you really don't have to break the bank to eat well. And in fact, there are many ways to eat nourishing foods, even on a tight budget. Uh, the highly processed foods really cost you twice, right? Uh, eating high food, the foods that are high in high sodium and sugar can lead to serious health conditions and they come with costs uh, for care or medication down the line, right? It may not it may may mean you're not able to work as much as you did previously, right? So, um, investing in your health now can save you big money and improve your quality of life down the road, right? You'll be preventing disease and disability, and sharpening your thinking, and boosting energy and living a longer, healthier life, right? All right, and then. Oh, here's a little exercise for you all. And then I'll open up for, for questions. I know there's some questions I missed in the chat. Um, what are, um, oops, there we go. What are three ways you could eat healthier and save money? Just wondering if there was something that resonated with you that I shared today or some other idea that came to mind um, while I was talking and an invitation is to write it down. There's uh, research showing when you write things down, our goals and intentions, they're more likely to happen because they're not just in our heads, but they're out in the world. And this is just for you. You don't have to share it here. You're welcome to share in the chat, um, but this is just for you. Maybe write down a few ways that you could um, start eating healthier and save money. Okay, I was saying right. so yeah. much. Thank you so much. That was great. Um, I think we had a couple of questions also. I know people asked for the recipe for like the snack bites. Yes. So I don't know if you were able to, I can send it out or if you want to put it in the chat. Well, no, I can't put the sure. If you can send a link to the recipe or something, we can send it out. Yeah, absolutely. I can do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That was wonderful. Yeah. So wonderful tips. Um, great, you know, advice and um, information. And I think there was one other thing about veg. Uh, let's see. About the lettuce, I think organic. Um, let why is or oh, why is organic as compared to non-organic oatmeal good to buy? Mm, oatmeal. Um... Honestly, it's 
any food can be organic or not, or most foods can be. That one, it's really a personal preference. Um, there's probably less pesticides on it if it's organic, but there's also, I don't know, it also costs a lot of money for a farmer or a business to put organic on their label. And so some of them, even if they are organic, don't can't say that they are. And so, I don't know, it's kind of a fine line. I think the fruits and veggies, it's a little more clear about organic versus non-organic and other things like oats and grains. It's really, um, it's really up to you. And it also, yeah, I think there's, yeah, maybe doing a little research on each one. I don't know. That's, um, it's a good question. It's a little nuanced. So what There's other questions do you have? That organic salad greens are triple washed and packaged. Should they be washed again before eating or are they okay to eat them? Uh, I always wonder that too. It's like they say triple wash, ready to eat, but do you trust that or do you still wash it? Yeah, I don't know. I wonder that too. I don't know if there's a clear <laughs> answer on that. Yeah, I guess if you trust it, then it's probably okay. I don't, I don't know. Um, I guess for you want, your own peace of mind, then just yeah. wash it again. <laughs> yeah, if you want to be safe, you can wash it again. Yeah. yeah. What else? I saw a few other questions here. Oh, what should we look for, if anything, on labels to make sure we aren't getting things uh, just being green, greenwashed? I don't know what they mean by that. Um, greenwashed. Maybe, oh, I see that question. Let's see. Make sure we aren't getting things just being greenwashed. Um, I think that's probably in reference to what I was just saying about like certain foods that are um, yeah, I think looking, I think just reading the ingredients is a, the ingredients and the nutrition facts will tell you a lot versus, because the packaging can be made lots of different ways to look really enticing and look even a really, even a product that says it's organic and all the things, right? The gluten-free and the this and that and that, um, it still might just be, um, it might just be like, puffed rice or like, I don't know, like it might not be the most healthy product, but they try and make it look that way. I think just reading the ingredients and knowing your individual food needs and um, is gonna be, uh, is really important. Both the ingredients and the nutrition facts and looking for total, total and added sugars and sodium um, and any kind of like, yeah, saturated fat and things like that. And then uh, there's a question about cheese. Uh, what is better? Mm. Is one better than the an another or anything to avoid? Um, hmm. Well, I think in general, 50% of the adult population is lactose intolerant. So if you're having any kind of stomach upset, it could be due to dairy and to do a little experimenting on that. If dairy, you know, is not a problem for you, I think as long as it doesn't have anything added, right? Like preservatives wise, um, I don't, yeah. I don't think there's like a particular cheese that you need to avoid. It's really, yeah, personal, personal preference. And avoiding whole milk, yeah, it's the same. Everyone has, has different needs, right? There's a lot of ideas out, out there about milk and, and that. Um, with the milk, though, I always wonder because if you'd get 2% or whatever, or, you know, 1%, there's always other ingredients in it. So that's where I wonder if that's, then it's better just to get whole milk. Yeah. And sometimes the other ingredients are, are vitamins that they add to that could have longer names too. But I, I think the most important thing, oh, okay. It's what I wanted to mention. Most important thing with dairy, milk, and cheese is to look for products that don't have antibiotics added, right? Antibiotic and hormone free dairy products. That's probably the most important thing, not like the specific type of cheese, but rather that it's free of hormones and antibiotics. Those things really mess with our bodies, our reproductive systems, digestive systems. We don't need, we don't need either of those. Right. Yeah. See a question about oils. 
I was thinking about doing a whole workshop on oils because there's a lot to say. <laughs> Maybe I kind of see what oils do I think are the healthier options for cooking and baking besides olive oil? Yeah, great question, Angel. Um, let's see. In general, I do think olive oil and avocado oil are good sort of go-to cooking oils. Um, with oils, you have to watch the, the smoke point. They all have different smoke points and you don't want to burn the oil because then it becomes not as, not as healthy for us. Um, and then it's important to store your oil too away from heat. So don't keep it like right next to the, the oven because it can make it go rancid quicker away from light and heat. Um, the more processed oils like um, canola, vegetable, cotton seed, grape seed, some of them are, you can see, find mixed things about, but I'd say in general, those are, those are less healthy options as like, doesn't mean to never eat them, but just not your go-tos to make your go-to is olive oil and um, avocado oil. Hope that helps. Soy, uh, soy. Oh yeah, soy. Um, well, like everything, it depends on your your body, right, and your needs and how much you're eating. Too, soy is a plant based estrogen, so it can mess with hormones in women. You're right. Um, if you're eating a lot of it. Some people do okay with it digestive wise. Other people have a lot of trouble digesting soy products. If you are gonna eat a soy product, I think the whole food version is best like edamame, right? Which are just whole soybeans or tempeh, which is a fermented soybean product um, or like whole firm tofu rather than the soy isolate. Like if you're buying a, like a veggie deli meat, for example, or um, Oh, what else has it in there? A lot of products, even granola bars have like soy protein isolate. I would just say try and avoid that if possible, those processed soy products. Those are not great. I hope that helps. It's sort of a like, it depends kind of situation because there are a lot of cultures that do eat soy, but they eat like a little bit, right? Um, like eating like a whole block of tofu at one time is probably a lot, right? But Eating now and again, it is a good source of protein and fiber and some other nutrients. So depends on your needs, right? I'm gonna scroll up and see if I missed other questions. Feel free to share any comments or anything that resonated with you. And I did wanna mention February 7th, we have a program with you again and your partner on rest and digest. That's right, thank you. Yeah, we'll be talking about digestion and sleep and the connection between the two. And we'll have a combination of some um, informational pieces and some, some practice uh, pieces. So you'll get to do some exercises and some breathing, breathing exercises and movement exercises. So that'll be good, yeah. Yeah. All right, I think uh, we got everything, let's see. I think I saw a question about an air fryer. Oh yes, and that's a that's a personal preference. Um, I I've heard great. Some people love them. I mean, it's really it's really up to you. I mean, I think you can try it, and yeah, some people like it. I'm a big fan of trying of cooking food lots of different ways. You know, baking and frying and sautéing and roasting and air fryer. You know, see what see what you like. You know, yeah, and I'm happy to share some resources. Um, let's see. All right, but thank you all so much for being here for your questions. I hope this was helpful and you got some good ideas and my information's on, on here. Feel free to, to email with any questions. My website's here as well. And thank you so much. Thank you, Allison. Everybody have a great evening. Thank Take care, you. everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.